Hi, my name is Philip from uh, DMGIS.com and Area DMG. And um, I guess for this first question, just in case our viewers may, and listeners may not be familiar with who you are and what you do, Jerry Jewell, who are you and what do you do? Uh, it's weird to ask by name who I am. <laughs> because then I don't know how to answer it. Uh, it gets philosophical. Um, I don't know. I guess you would say that I'm a, a voice actor. Uh, at least that's what I use. That's why I'm usually at these convention things. And uh, I also direct some dubs of anime for Funimation. That's. I'm not sure if that encompasses who I am or what I do, because I do other things as well. Like I'm sure most of you do. This is, I'm sure going to rooms and sitting in them and asking people questions is not the only thing you do. But we're not here to talk about those things, <laughs> right? Because we're at an anime convention, so. Marcus from Kaiju no Comic Creativity by Design. So between doing both voice work and directing, what challenges have you found yourself facing, especially if you have to ever direct yourself? Uh, I generally don't have to direct myself. Um, it happens very rarely. These days if I direct myself it's probably because someone else didn't come in or something happened uh, and, and I have to step in and do a couple of lines or a reaction or something. Uh, and for those, most of the time no one's going to bother with who's directing me, especially if it's just a silly noise. Um, so it's not that Finding time to do other things, that's the difficult part, I think, about voice acting and directing, is finding time to do other things. Because I'm directing throughout the day, and then usually recording after work into the evening. And sometimes you want to do other stuff, but you can't, because you're directing or acting. Hi, uh, Jim from The Game Slave. Uh, you talked a little bit in the voice actor panel last night that it took you about seven to ten years before you really felt like <laughs> yes. you were a professional. Uh, could you talk about those feelings of imposter syndrome and imposter how you syndrome. get through that? Um, you know, it, to be honest, the imposter syndrome has presented itself to me before in, in, in other areas. Uh, I think I, I come to all of this through just a natural urge or compulsion to imitate things. Um, I can't help it. It's just a thing I've always done, try to imitate things. But really, isn't that all any of us do anyway? What, it, what we call learning things, we're just imitating other things other people have done throughout the millennia. I don't know how long have people been around. Do we know how long? I don't know. <laughs> uh, but we're here as a product of the fact that some of them were smart enough not to die, you know, <laughs> before they reproduced. Um, what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> was, I guess how, how do you work through like, your oh, personal yeah, feelings syndrome. on that? Yeah. Imposter syndrome. Um, <laughs> it takes time. I think it takes time and it takes experience. Um, for example, uh, before, before any of, of this came about, uh, I lived in Colorado in the early, no, in the late 90s, I guess, for a little while, in, uh, in Glenwood Springs. Um, we had moved to Glenwood Springs from Fort Smith, Arkansas. Uh, now, if you're from Fort Smith, Arkansas, um, or, or from somewhere smaller, closer to that, you kind of grow up with this sense that there's nothing, there's nothing that comes from where you're from, you know? Uh, you're, you're from a place where nothing really happens. Um, so you get this sense in your head that for some reason, if, and, and I've always, you know, tried to perform in some way, shape, or form, you get this sense in your head that, oh, but I'm, there's no way I could ever be as good as any of those other people 
out there. And, and it turns out it's just not true at all. If you're good in Fort Smith, Arkansas, you're going to be good wherever else you decide to go. It's, it's all in your head. Um, plus, you have no job judging yourself anyway. Who are you to judge yourself? You're a terrible judge. Uh, uh, you know, be, be realistic with yourself, as realistic as you can be. But, but don't get into judging what you do, because you're the, you're the worst person to ask. Um, you're, too, you're too critical of what you do, most likely. Um, so it's not, you're not going to have a fair representation of yourself. You leave that up to the other people, and you just do what you do. Um, and over time, you go, oh, wait a second, I'm actually competent. I'm not, I'm not fooling everybody. It, it turns out I'm valuable uh, because I know, I know what I'm doing. Um, but it takes time. It definitely takes time, and I think it's no matter what. In some ways, it's more evident than others. Like, if you're an athlete, for example, uh, and you're the fastest runner, well, it's evident to you pretty quickly that you're like, hey, I'm good at this. So much so that I'm faster than all of these other people. But, but in something like voice acting, it's not a competition. You know, you're just, you're, you're, this is all, you're in it for you. And for, hopefully, for wanting to perform. Because um, it's better not be for the money. You're going to be really disappointed. You know, kind of like being press. <laughs> right? You better enjoy it on some level. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm Bo from So Like You Know. This is JP. Um, what motivates you and energizes you prior to any role that you're going to start working on? Uh, I just have a general love of performance, um, and especially those people that you see that... I like to use uh, Anthony Hopkins as, as an example uh, in Thor. The comment I made after seeing that movie was, Anthony Hopkins, it's like, man, that guy can do more acting with one eye <laughs> than a good portion of that cast. You know? And, it, and there's something so clear. It, we all giggle at it, but there's something so clear about it when, when you say it that way that it's like, no, that's true. And, and everybody knows what it, what it is in a way, but at the same time, what is it? It's something that's intangible. We don't know. It's just something Anthony Hopkins is just that good. Um, I think that's what keeps the best of people going, is they just want to be good at what they do. The rest hopefully takes care of itself, but, but the goal is to be good at what you do. I hope. <laughs> Unless you're in government office for some reason. <laughs> All different pursuit. I'm Jessalyn from Asian Avenue. What would you say are the biggest nuances of being a voice actor for the media that originates in another language? Um, you know, to me, I think it's just be an actor. Um, I don't speak Japanese. But over the years, of course, you learn a few phrases here and there. Uh, but, but things like mood, uh, those are universal. You know, those things are universal. So I kind of think of dubbing as, as just a glorified game of, of uh, telephone, in a way. <laughs> And really, it doesn't need to be anything more than that, in my opinion. I'm, because I'm sure there are others that would completely disagree with that statement. Um, but, but I don't look at it as, you know, we didn't create this content. Uh, that was already done. Um, and really, I don't direct this content. I direct the dub of of what's already there. That's what I should be doing. Um, and we shouldn't be 
necessar necessarily changing details or anything like that. It should, it should literally be, hey, how would you say this in English? You know, that's, that's how I look at dubbing. Um, but again, that doesn't mean that there aren't people who see that differently. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, um, speaking of nuance, um, what do you think so far of non-DESCON? Oh, I love this con. Uh, I, I've only been here once before, but I compare every other convention to this convention. Favorably? Uh, well, they all have to measure up to this convention. This is, this is the pinnacle, is what I'm saying, of conventions. Um, they have the best green room, hands down, uh, of any convention. Um, the only the only one I personally have ever seen compared to it was a was a Comic Con that I went to, uh, but hands down, as far as normal, you know, conventions, they've got best green room. Uh, they are the most well prepared convention. Um, there are probably other conventions that are going to hate that I say that, but I'm sorry. It's just the way it is. You get here, they have this binder for you that has everything outlined, everything you need to know, contact information, um, what the green room will be serving at whatever meal, your schedule, uh, anything else you need to know. And it's like, if after you've been to a lot of these, you go, now that's a rarity someone that has everything prepared, um, they've always got it planned out where you need to be at what time, they have someone there to take you where you need to go. These, these are all things that all conventions should strive for. Uh, this is how you run things smoothly. So I love this convention. Absolutely. So you do, um, my name is Kelly with Kaiju no Kami, and... Hi you, Kelly. Hi! <laughs> It's like an AA meeting. Um, so you had mentioned with voice acting and directing, it's almost like you do voice, you do directing during the day, you moonlight as a voice actor, and you have difficulty doing other things. I noticed that you also enjoy music. How do you try to fit that in to your other things, so to speak, with like the Peach Truck Republic? Well, we don't play much as a band anymore. Mm -hmm. um, we still... Uh, we still work on things. We just take a lot more time to do it. <laughs> um, but again, that's a thing that we just enjoy doing. So it's it's not like we're trying to, to sell it to anyone necessarily or, or anything like that. The goal is to finish the song. What got you into uh, doing music? Um, I, I come from a family of musicians. So it's just something that I've always been around. And... Uh, Somewhere along the line, I, I decided I wanted to learn to play other instruments, so I just started picking up other instruments, mostly strings, because I, I kind of, over time, I, I kind of understand how strings work, at least, and you can apply that to any stringed instrument, so, uh, though they're all different tunings, how, how they work functionally is the same, you know. So once you learn the patterns, it's <laughs> Uh, you were in uh, back in the early 2000s in the original dub of Fruits Basket, mm -hmm. and now mm -hmm. you're voice in the same character just say again. It when I was young. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I wanted to ask: is you're going to be voicing the same character, but you're a different person than you were to some to some extent 50 years ago, both physically and emotionally. Mm -hmm. how, how is that going to affect? How do you think that affects your performance? Um. Well, that's a really good question. I try not to let it to, to affect my performance too much, but I don't see how it couldn't, you know, you know what I mean? And it's, it's really just having that experience. When, when I did it originally, I was a lot closer in actual age uh, to, to that character. Um, it was a lot more fresh in my memory what it was like to be a teenage boy uh, angry at the world, um, which is every teenage boy <laughs> in some sense. Uh, 
uh, you don't have to be so outwardly angry, but in some sense you're probably angry with the world. Um, it's more fun, I think, I think I can look at the emotion of it in a more nuanced way now, though. Uh, so you may, not, you may not have the same energy, that same fire that a, a, a teenage kid has. You can play it. It's tiring. It's exhausting. Because <laughs> uh, you remember what it was like, and, and you start to ask yourself, how did I ever? Oh, jeez. I remember those days where it's like, give me, a, a, give me another Coke, and I'll just bounce around bounce off the walls for another couple of hours, and then I'll go run around the track, and then we'll come and we'll, you know. Uh, but I, I look at it, I look at it now, at least emotionally, and I understand a lot more of what's really going on um, underneath, underneath what is perceived as anger about everything. But it's, it's, you know, you get older and you go, oh, it's way more complicated than that. All right. I see more... I see more classic storytelling elements now in the story than I was able to see when I was younger. Because I didn't know as much about storytelling. And I didn't understand metaphor very well. Uh, but now I look at it and I go, oh, this story's way deeper than it looks on the surface. Thank you. Mm -hmm. If you could have any superpower, what would it be and why? Uh, what makes you think I don't have a superpower? <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, my superpower? No, I don't. Know. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know that superpowers are necessary. Not anymore. You know, anymore. It's like, hey, try to be a decent person. And it's like, if you can do that, it almost seems like a superpower. <laughs> or, how about this? We, we make it even more difficult. Try to be a decent person online. Oh. <laughs> uh-huh. That's right. I challenge the world. <laughs> Try to be better people online. But why? It's no fun. <laughs> it's more fun to not be nice online. They know. And they're using it against you. Well, going back to um, earlier, you mentioned energy and imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. One thing I've noticed at a lot of these conventions is while we're here, you may, you may have noticed that there's like a really high energy so far in this convention, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, people are really off the wall here. They're very energetic, happy. But when the convention ends, a lot of people go to their, their daily lives, their school, work, home, and then they just kind of like... Mm -hmm. They feel like they're just kind of coasting. The energy goes away. Do you have any tips or tricks that might help them to preserve that energy that they get from here, that replenishment, and keep that in their everyday life? Well, there, I think there are certain rules that kind of go for everyone, and they're the same ones they've been telling you since you were children. Nobody listens to them, though. <laughs> uh, you know, um, go outside. Uh, exercise, watch your diet, um, do things that you enjoy, try to avoid things that are bad for you. <laughs> you know the basics that we all ignore. Those things. Eat some chocolate. <laughs> That's one of mine. Eat some chocolate. Why you can't? You can't eat chocolate? Oh, while you can. Oh, while you can. Away. Is the chocolate going away? The chocolate's going away. Who's taking the chocolate? Climate. Oh. <laughs> Climate's taking everything. <laughs> <laughs> Sam from Akaiju no Kami, Creativity by Design. We like to look at things from an ed educational perspective. So for kids that have this passion and this energy and get-go to go into acting, what advice would you personally give them yourself? Um, pay attention to other people. Every, everyone in some sense is a character. And, and they will have something about them that you can use in your bag of tricks um, for some character that you will play in the future. So pay attention to other people, pay attention to their behavior, 
pay attention to stereotypes, pay attention to archetypes, um, read lots of stories um, as, as much as you can, and uh, yeah, pay attention. <laughs> Everything is potentially useful. So in you know, getting to know you a little bit here in this conversation, you seem pretty low-key, kind of mm -hmm. low-energy sort of person. A lot of your roles are these rather manic sort of characters, yeah, though. Yeah. Is that a hard stretch for you, or is that something that here's, you find really fun? Here's what I have found. If you, if you keep everything pretty even in real life, any shift in emotion whatsoever, people go, oh, he's just amazing. He's, what an amazing actor. What an amazing actor. He's so different than he is normally. And it's like, well, I've learned you, you can put forth way less energy if you just cut it from the bottom, you see. Go to the low end most of the time. That way when you play it up, they're like, oh my goodness, he's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, I, I'll try to play anything. I, I enjoy a challenge. Um, I've, I've said before, you know, a lot of these characters that I play, they're really different versions of the same character, just with different parts emphasized. Um, uh, Kyo isn't that different, for example, from Momo. He's just smarter and a little more serious. Um, but they're not that, you know, they both sound like me. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, comes, it, it comes down to some level to character. That's really it. It's character. And, and uh, where do I get those? Well, I listen, first of all, I get to listen to uh, what the Japanese sounds like, and that's, uh, that's extremely helpful to me. To me, it's like, you just give me that, and I'm good. Uh, give me the words I'm saying, and, and let me see what the intention is, and okay, well, I've got it from there, because I've been doing that forever. Uh, but I remember, uh, we were talking about this earlier in the, in the green room, there was a time at Funimation when we didn't preview at all. So, at, so the first take was always cold, straight into it. Uh, so you're just, you know, you don't know what the speed of the line is going to be. Uh, now after years of doing it, I, I bet you I could guess pretty closely if I could go back in time and we still had to do it with no preview. Um, but that's only because you, you learn over time that, it, that anime has, each show has like this certain rhythm that it eventually you watch enough of it and you're like, oh, okay, this show falls into a certain rhythm, I can kind of guess what the speed of this is going to be. Um, but the, the ability to preview changed everything. Because see, back in the day, you had to go through a process. It'd be like, oh, we have to rewind this tape and then press play and record again in order to do this. And now it's like digital, so it's a lot faster, and you just go back and re-record it. Uh, oh, the wonders of technology. <laughs> so with you uh, playing Barry the Chopper, was there any certain influences that you took into that, like you borrowed from, or was it just like, hey, just go above your... Play it crazy. <laughs> uh, uh, Mike... McFarlane got pretty descriptive uh, with how crazy he wanted it, um, and he got, it was, uh, I, I'll put it this way, I can't repeat any of it <laughs> uh, anywhere that it's going to be either recorded or in print. Um, <laughs> it was fairly graphic, but funny at the same time, um, which kind of sums up that that character. And I, I always get a kick out of Barry the Chopper because people, <laughs> people enjoy him in a way that, that 
is almost incomprehensible, but it, it's what makes him the kind of character I like, is Barry the Chopper was only scary at one point in the show, and that's when he was human. Uh, everything after that is pretty much comic relief. That's how he functions. But for some reason, people still associate him with being a, a slasher more so than they do comic relief. But it's odd because he's mostly comic relief. Uh, and those are the characters I like. It's like, well, people like Barry the Chopper. Why? Why? He's a man, he's, he kills people. Because we, we almost see him like, like come in, up in, in brutal ways. The principal, Nezu, when he goes crazy. Or right? <laughs> I was like, oh, there's, there's Barry. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Uh, but, but there's still, or, or uh, in Bacchano, Claire Stanfield, that's another guy. That's the same thing. It's like, I'm not supposed to like this guy, but I do. You know? Killed a whole train full of people. But it isn't he great? <laughs> <laughs> and it's that sort of, you know, it's, it's, those are just great characters that, that look at that, the shadow side of, of the, of the person and, and make it likable. It's almost perverse in a way. But fun. Well, going back to, um, you mentioned before, actually in your resume here, it's, uh, you've been in the industry since 2001. How do you feel the industry has changed over the last 15 or so years? Uh, it has gotten so much faster. Um, that's the biggest way I think it has changed. There's just a lot more anime to do now. Uh, but, you know, it's... That's business, I guess, the moment, the moment this little niche thing started making money, they're like, oh wait, there's money? <laughs> there's money somewhere? They started smelling money, uh, and then they go, okay, well let's buy up all of it that we can, and let's make all of it that we can, and let's dub it, we need a dub now, we need a dub yesterday, let's do it. Uh, and I think that's where we are. <laughs> it's, gotten, it's gotten a whole lot faster. If you could describe yourself with one song, what would it be? With one song? Uh, always look on the bright side of life. <laughs> um, I completely forgot what I was going to ask now. Oh, um, you mentioned that you know industry is moving a lot faster now. Um, so you're involved in, I guess, you are involved in some of the simul dub work. Oh yes, and that's that's all we extremely do. Extremely fast paced. Yeah. Do you guys go back for another pass on stuff after the initial simul dub for like the for home for video. like the for the video release? Yes, we do. Okay. I don't know if they ever update it <laughs> on on the site, mm -hmm. but I know that we do the fixes for home video. Um, do you ever look at reviews online of yourself and your voice acting work? Nope. And do you let okay? Do you let that affect you at all? Never. It does not affect me at all. Nor is it important to me. Um, it's uh, the person whose judgment I care about my performance is not going to be someone writing about it online anyway, um, because there's always that question: Who are you? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's like when people go, uh, I don't like your accent for such and such character. I go, okay, that's fair. I didn't think it was that good either. Let me hear yours. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, then it becomes a different story. Mm -hmm. Then it's like, oh, so you're not really in a position to judge my, my ability to do that accent. Okay, well, then that's fair too. But there's no need to act like you are in a position to judge my ability to do that exit. So it's a matter of who's commenting. Mm -hmm. But I don't even look. Who's got the time? I don't understand <laughs> where people get the time. I, 
I imagine there's so much work not getting done. <laughs> I really do. I, that's, that's all I can imagine, and I don't understand it, because I, I literally find myself asking all the time, where do people get the time? And they're like, did you see this thing online? And I'm like, no. When, when did this happen? It happened yesterday. You didn't see it? No, I didn't see it. When did you... How do you, oh, I retweeted it from this person who tweeted it to this person. I'm like, how do you have the time? Well, it's because there, I'm assuming there is a lot of things they're not doing. <laughs> That's the only way you could possibly have the time. And uh, I have enough trouble keeping up with things. Uh, so I don't have the time for that. <sighs> oh, I thought he was telling us there was a moose in the room. <laughs> 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 There's no moose, everybody calm down. <laughs> we are safe. What project are you most looking forward to right now? Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing what, what's going to happen in Fruits Basket, because I refuse to look into where it goes. I haven't read the manga, and I'm not going to, uh, because I want to be surprised by it. And we're getting to that point where all of everything's going to be new to me, and I'm excited about that because I want to see what happens. We passed under the 10 minute mark, which means we probably don't have enough for a complete loop in case. But that means that if there's any remaining things that our guest wants to take the floor on and say, this gives an opportunity for that. Nah. <laughs> Nothing you'd I'll like take, to promote or I'll tell take people where to find you? Um, I mean, it's, I'm not that important. Um, just, uh, there's always something I'm working on for Funimation. You know, there are always two shows, at least. Right now, I'm working on um, Kochoki, Young Nobunaga. Uh, it's an interesting show. The art design's really cool, though, so you should check it out. And uh, I'm working on a certain scientific accelerator, um, which is, of course, a, a spin-off series in the in the railgun slash index universe with Austin Tyndall as accelerator. Um, that's what I'm working on right now, and I have no idea what it will be next season, but. I will be directing whatever that is by the seat of my pants. Uh, maybe. And where can people find you if you want them to find you online? Uh, I do have a website that is uh, sillygingermonkey.com. Don't ask. <laughs> uh, and uh, I don't even know what's on there because I didn't create it. I'm sure it has dates of things, like if I'm going to be somewhere, uh, stuff like that. But I, yeah, I don't know where you, where people find the time. <laughs> I just don't get it. You pay people for the time. That's where it comes from. I'm I'm too busy working, <laughs> is the thing, and I'm starting to realize that I'm working more because other people are like, well, I'm working less, so somebody's got to do the work. <laughs> well, when you do have copious amounts of free time, what I don't. Okay, when <laughs> that's the thing I don't. <laughs> when the last time you had a copious amount of free time, I guess years and years back, apparently. Yeah. Um, what is a movie or television series that you like to binge on just to relax? I don't. I, I generally play music. Music is good. What's yeah. your favorite band then? No, I play music. Oh. oh. I sit down with an instrument. <laughs> oh, sorry, never mind. <laughs> and sometimes I'll record it and then I'll sit down with another instrument and play with that <laughs> other instrument because I don't have any friends. <laughs> Because where do you find the time? <laughs> you know, there's so much work to do. You, you need a TARDIS. Yeah, I do. You need a vacation. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I'm taking vacation to be here. Um, but it doesn't seem like vacation, does it? I think we've all realized something today. <laughs> we can do it. We can kind of start doing that. Anything else, Beth? 
Nope. No, They're all scared to talk now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for letting Thank me you enjoy. Thank you for attending us. Thank you.